Welcome to Electro Online. Here we can now try out what we've learned so far. We're going to try to find the phase shift of this circuit right here. We have two inductors, we have two resistors. It's basically two shifters in series with one another. So to do that, we need to find the voltage at this point right here, and we're going to need to find the impedance of this part of the circuit so we can use the voltage divider, the voltage dropped across this part of the circuit, relative to voltage dropped across the whole circuit, and then V1 becomes the input voltage for this part of the phase shifter. And that's the approach we're going to take. We've already calculated the, uh, the uh, inductive reactance of L1 and L2, since we were given that the frequency is 100 Hz, so the angular frequency is 2 pi times 100 Hz. So let's see. Let's start by finding the impedance Z1. To do that, we have these two in series, that's in parallel with this right here. So the impedance Z1 is equal to the product divided by the sum. So here we have L1, the reactance of L1 is J2513, so J times 25.13. We multiply the times the, the impedance of these two in series, so that would be 60 plus L2, which is 12, that's J, 12.57. And the whole thing divided by the sum of the two, which would be J, 25.13, added to 60 plus J, 12.57. So now we're going to convert this into the magnitude and angle format, so we can go ahead and multiply. Once we add this together, we're going to convert that as well. So let's go ahead and add these two together. So this would be 60 plus J, that would be 37.70 for the denominator. So now when we convert all this, let's see what we get. Uh, let's see, the numerator, that would be 25.13, with an angle of 90 degrees. That's going to be multiplied times this. So the magnitude of that would be 3600 plus 12.57 squared. Take the square root of that, which is 61.30, with an angle of 12.57 divided by 60. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 11.83. And in the denominator, the magnitude of that, that would be 3600 plus 37.7 squared. Take the square root of that, which is 70.86. With an angle of 37.7 divided by 60. Take the inverse tangent of that, which is 32.14. So what we can do now is go ahead and calculate the impedance Z1, which is equal to the magnitude, we get 25.13 times 61.3 divided by 70.86 equals, that gives us 21.74 with a phase angle of 90 plus 11.83 divided by, oh, oop, let me try it again. That would be 101.83, 101.83, and then uh, minus 32.14 equals. That's 69.69, 69.69 69 degrees. And we're now going to write this into the real part in imaginary, imaginary part format so we can work with it in the future. So 21.74 times 69.69, take the cosine of that, equals, that's um, 7.55 for the real part plus J, and then the imaginary part, 69.69, take the sine of that, times 21.74, that would be 20.39. So now we have the impedance of this part of the circuit in terms of the magnitude and angle and the, in terms of the real part and the imaginary part. So now we're ready to find V1. V1 
can be found by taking the input voltage, V in, and multiplying it times the ratio of the voltage drop across here, which depends upon the magnitude of the impedance, which is Z divided by the impedance of the whole circuit, which would be Z1 here, R1 plus Z1. So here you can see why you want this in both formats. For the numerator, we have V in. For the numerator, we put Z1 as this format, 21.74 with an angle of 69.69 .69 degrees. And in the denominator, we want to put it in this format so we can add R1 to that. So we get uh, R1, which is 80, plus 7.55, plus J20.39. So then when we combine these two, this will be 87.55 plus J20.39, which means that if we now write it into this format, the magnitude and angle, 21.74, with an angle of 69.69 .69 degrees in the numerator, divided by, in the denominator, we get 87.55, we want to square that, plus 20.39, we want to square that, take the square root, we get 89.89, with a phase angle of 20.39 divided by 87.55, take the inverse tangent, that would be 13.11 degrees. Now we can go ahead and say that V1 is equal to V input times the ratio. So we have 21.74 divided by 89.89. That would be 0 0.24 for the magnitude with a phase angle of 69. 0.69 minus 13.11 is 56 degrees and 0.58. All right. So now we have a solution for V1. We can now find the output voltage as a function of V1, where V1 is a function of the input voltage. So let's see, where do we do that? Uh, let's do it right here. So now we can say that V out is equal to, it's going to be the voltage dropped across this component divided by the voltage dropped on the whole thing times the V1. So we have that will be V1 times the ratio of the reactants of that. So that's 12.57, so that's J12.57 divided by this resistance, which is 60 plus J12.57. So this will be equal to V1 times J12.57, which is 12.57 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, divided by this. So we have 3600 plus 12.57 squared, take the inverse uh, take the square root, which is 61.3, 61.30, with a phase angle of 12.57, divided by 60, take the inverse tangent, which is 11.83 degrees. That's an 8 right here, 3 degrees. All right, so now we can go ahead and find V out as a function of V1. So that will be 12.57 divided by 61.3. So that will be 0 0.21. Two, oh, I'm just going to write as 205 to reduce the rounding error. And then 90 minus 11.83, which is 78.17, an angle of 78.17 degrees. So now we have the output voltage in terms of V1, and we have V1 in terms of V input. So now we can find the output voltage in, ter in terms of the input voltage and find the phase angle or the shift on that. V out in terms of V in. We're going to replace, oh, this should not be there. That should be a multiplication there. It's V1 times this quantity right there. 
So this is going to be equal to V1. Now V1 is defined right here. So this will be Vn times 0 0.24 with a phase angle of 56.58 degrees, like this. So there's my V1 multiplied times 0 0.205 with a phase angle of 78.17 degrees. All right, so now you can see that we can now write V out in terms of V in. So V out is equal to V in times, we multiply 0.24 times 0.205, we get 0 0.049, 0 0.049, with a phase angle of 56, 0.58 plus 78.17, that will be 134.75 degrees. All right, so this is our final answer. It takes us a while to get there, but notice what happened here. The input voltage, whatever that may be, that's whatever the voltage is the input right here, gets multiplied times 0 0.049, which means that the output voltage will have a magnitude of 4.9% of the input voltage and will be shifted by an angle of 134.75 degrees. If we do a quick phasor diagram on that, you can see that if the input voltage is in this direction right here, then you can see that the output voltage will be somewhere in this direction, a much smaller output voltage. This will be V out with an angle like this of 134.75 degrees. And that's how we make a phase shifter using inductors. Notice we basically have two shifters in series. And the way to find that is to find the voltage here, find the impedance of this part of the circuit, and then the rest is history. That's how it's done.